I went to Africa, I think I had assumed that women were dying of very rare diseases, things I'd never seen as an obstetrician. I was absolutely stunned and appalled by what I saw. During the nighttime, very often the midwives were conducting births by candlelight, by kerosene lanterns. A hospital without electricity was something Laura Stachel never imagined. For 14 years, she had been a well-respected OBGYN in Berkeley until a back injury sidelined her career. The doctor had been so good at her job, she could deliver a baby by cesarean in just under two minutes. But without power, none of that mattered. Any type of delivery is nearly impossible. One. Oh. And the lights just went out. Okay. So much of what we do requires electricity. The monitors, the lights, the machinery for helping with deliveries. It never occurred to me that in other parts of the world that the things that we assume to be completely fundamental to medical care would be absent. That revelation came to Laura after her first visit to Africa in 2008. While studying for a PhD in public health at UC Berkeley, she was asked to observe the conditions at a Nigerian hospital. It was to find out why women there were 70 times more likely to die in childbirth than women in the U.S. There was one night that I watched in the labor room in darkness while a woman with a condition called eclampsia was fighting for her life. She had high blood pressure, she had developed seizures, and there was just none of the equipment and the facility to really keep her alive, and she was in utter darkness. It was just one of the many heartbreaking scenes that Laura encountered on her two-week visit. And I sat there watching and wondering, what am I doing here? Why am I actually here right now at this moment? And I thought maybe, maybe part of the reason that I'm here right now is because maybe I can be a voice for these women who are dying in silence. This is the thing I'm wondering, if we have this and we just put it up a little bit, can you put this up higher? So the conversation began of how to best help these women. It was Laura's husband, Hal, who came up with an answer. I'm a solar guy and I like to solve problems and this was a perfect problem for solar to solve. What Hal designed was a solar system that not only gave the hospital light, but power for their blood bank refrigerator. However, before that was completed, Laura wanted to show her colleagues what solar was all about. So inside a suitcase, she packed a small demonstration kit that Hal assembled. What was remarkable was that when they saw that, they wanted to keep it. And they said, please leave it here because this will help us save lives even right now. And that was the, the light bulb moment for us. Even a little bit of power could go a long way towards saving a life. It wasn't long before word spread about the solar kit. Clinics and hospitals around the world began asking for one of their own. We weren't thinking we were going to become a solar suitcase company. <laughs> this was like, this is just a little something in my spare time. That was the idea. But the need was just too great. There was an earthquake in Haiti. Doctors from the Bay Area were going to work in the tent clinics, and they needed a reliable source of electricity. Meanwhile, Laura was hearing more about the tough conditions African midwives faced during childbirth. You lost the light, and the only way to get light was to burn the calendar, the, the calendar. so you could see enough you to like cut the cord. Air. OK, you get the prize for the most amazing story. <laughs> <laughs> That's when the couple decided to start the nonprofit company, We Care Solar. If you had looked at my house in those days, you would have seen parts from one end of the living room to the dining room and spilling into the backyard. It was just covering everything because we were trying to keep up with this demand. That changed once the couple was awarded a grant from the MacArthur Foundation. Suddenly, the backyard project was on an assembly line. And so I said, OK, now that we're getting to this point, let's design it differently. The concern was that the solar suitcase could somehow fail when it's in a clinic half a world away. To compensate, Hal says he over-designed the system. So I just want to demonstrate this light to you. Turn it on. Very robust. It's designed to take many falls. It can be stepped on in the mud. And this light right here should last about 70,000 hours or about 10 to 20 years. With more suitcases being built, it was time to figure out how to get them to those faraway clinics. So far, Laura or a member of her small staff delivered each case personally. However, demand had now spread to 20 different countries, including Afghanistan, India, and Burma. That's when Laura decided to seek out 
Solar Ambassadors. We invited 14 women from around the world to come stay with us in Berkeley and to do a hands-on workshop that lasted for about six days. And we trained them, we set up all these troubleshooting problems, and then they're going to go out with us to the countries where we're installing solar electric systems, and they're going to uh, train local people on how to do it, both how to use them and also how to install them. So far, the plan appears to be working. Now we have approximately 200 suitcases around the world, and a conservative estimate is that we're serving 80,000 mothers and infants a year. And the yellow means that what Laura has been able to achieve has not gone unnoticed. Among the many, she's received honors from the United Nations, the New York Times, and the Tech Awards. However, the biggest prize for Laura is the good news she hears from Africa. We had a doctor who requested a solar suitcase last Thanksgiving. He called us five weeks later and he said, I want to tell you what happened. The night that I came, I was able to save a woman with twins using the light. And I would have called you the next day, but there was an outbreak of cholera the next day. And for the next 30 days, every man, woman, and child that had cholera came to our clinic and we used the solar suitcase every night. He said, for the first time in the history of this village, no one died of cholera. We saved 122 patients. And he said, in the past, 50% of these people would have died. And so I looked at my husband after that. We were just both crying and said, oh my god, we have to keep going. I'm really proud of Laura. She is a force of nature. She makes things happen. The happiest day in my life. Tell me why. The light. Why is it making you so happy? Because she told that we are free from darkness. Uh -huh. Yeah. <laughs> when you hear stories like that, and you realize that no matter how hard the struggle is, you're really making a difference in the world.